So I'm going to start streaming. Um, would somebody like to just describe the picture to me? Uh, a process of raw material, raw material um, who goes, who undergoes some um, uh, how shall I say it? Uh, undergoes uh, some methods to get close at the end. Yeah, basically, ah. in this context, um, what we're looking at is the raw materials arriving. Uh, on the carts drawn by horses and it was the merchants the people who were going to sell the finished goods that tended to bring the raw materials now as you can see we've got sheep here but um, if you were reliant only on the sheep you could keep that restricted how much cloth you could weave and so it was um, a good idea for the merchants to provide more raw materials than one farm could sustain. Okay, um, and weaving was a skill. So then, what would happen then? The raw materials would come, and so let's look at wool and cotton. What would be the first process? Can you remember? We discussed it last week. Uh, wool and cotton, they, they are different, Nelly. Yep, they're, they're totally different, they but they're both some... raw materials, okay? okay? Uh-huh, and they go to the spinner's cottage, uh, they will be, uh, before they go to the spinner's cottage, they have to be washed, to be sheared, uh, no, not shear. what was the... Mm. Washed and carded. To right? card. Yeah, that's to right, card. but washing is important, and uh, and of course, the first thing that would happen to the cotton is it would have to be picked and the wool it would the sheep would have to be sheared you're quite right but then the washing and the carding and then that probably that um, prepared raw material would be brought to the spinners cottages then where would it go april where or when where when where, where? where? after the spinners cottage yes after the spinner's cottage, uh, according to the picture, it goes to the weaver's cottage. But yeah. what is the difference between spin, and, spin, the spin, and the weave? We will Spinning have a look that at that in a minute. Okay. Yeah, we we we're gonna do well. We we can't do it, of course, but we'll look at the um, process involved in a moment. So it would go to the weaver's cottage, and the, so the spinners would spin the material. Uh, in this case, the cotton or the wool, they would spin it. They would create a thread and then that thread would be taken to the weavers, probably again by the spinner or by the merchant, maybe by the farmer, maybe by, maybe they would live in the same village. Um, it would depend on what skills there were available. And then the weavers would weave the cloth and the, we the merchant would come back to take away the finished cloth not the clothing note the cloth what do you think would happen to the cloth after the merchant had come and taken it away okay i think the the cloths will get to a tailor yeah or to a seamstress or to maybe a shop that would sell the material um a lot of things were made especially if it was fine cloth, a lot of things were made to measure back then. You wouldn't go down to C&A or Debenhams and buy off the peg back then. You'd make it yourself or you would have a seamstress or a tailor. Tailors tended to work making men's suits and seamstresses tended to work making ladies, children's clothing, that kind of thing. Some houses had their own seamstress and being able to sew was considered a necessary skill back then not many people know how to sew now i'm afraid to say what about you guys have you ever made your own clothing come on be honest april apart from not not virtual clothing okay <laughs> real clothing in the real world <laughs> i do i do i do i still do lynn oh uh, lovely not, uh, yeah 
uh, in the past, yeah, we made also we learned we learned that at, at school, and I have um, I have made a couple of uh, dresses, and then after school, uh, um, my sister, my older my oldest sister, always asked me to to uh, sew to sew. To sew uh, dresses for to her, sew, for, yes. her uh, for her, yeah, to sew for, for her, and then uh, uh, when uh, I was uh, yeah, I have I have bought a couple of uh, patron. Is that also patron? Lin? Uh, we call it patron in English. So uh, the, in in paper up on paper. Oh, pattern uh, patterns. Oh, pattern, yeah, pattern. I think patron. <laughs> Yeah, yes, it is in, in Dutch. Yeah, not in English. <laughs> yes, paper patterns. Yeah, they're like made, made of paper tissue pattern. paper. Yeah. Yeah, from Vogue. You see, do you know that Vogue? Vogue, but uh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I made my my uh, myself my my dresses, but now uh, I'm too lazy for it. <laughs> Oh, shame. I agree that. I mean, the, the problem now is it's naughty. I used to make uh, my own clothing. I was taught how to sew at school. I also have a sewing machine, an electronic sewing machine upstairs. Um, the most things I ever use my sewing machine for now really is um, if I have to mend something or making tablecloths because we've got a big table and uh, it's very difficult to buy the cloths. So I think the last thing I made was a tablecloth, which is uh, a shame, really. But um, it does take time to make your own clothing. And clothing is so much cheaper. Back then, it was very expensive. And yeah, quite elaborate the, uh, as well. Retouches. Sorry, April? Is that retouches, Lynn? Is that retouches? I, do, I still do some retouch or retouches. Um, but, uh, plural. When what what do you mean by retouches? Uh, for example, I buy uh, I've bought jeans, and it's too long, so I uh, retouch that. Okay, uh, we wouldn't say shorter. retouch. You can retouch a painting. Um, so when you want to make changes to clothing, um, you can. Oh, what would we call it? Um, it's not retouching altering okay so you make alterations to make alterations okay so shortening oh, okay. the long trousers um letting out the waistline or if you're very lucky um letting in the waistline <laughs> usually it's to let out the waistline <laughs> lengthening the sleeve short just little things they're called alterations okay to alter Okay, and you can alter the pattern as well, and you can alter the clothing. Otherwise, if there's a, a problem with the clothing, for example, if a button has dropped off or if you've ripped a hole in something, then we call it to mend. That make Remember when I was talking about make, do and mend during the um, last... Um, the last recession we had, everybody was going on about make, do and mend. Everybody's still buying stuff from Primark nowadays, though. <laughs> what about you, Traum? Do you often make your own clothing or do you often make clothes for the children? Uh, I have to say I do more uh, of all, uh, alter, uh, alterings. Alterations, alterations yeah. <laughs> alterations. Yes, I did it, and it was a, a great hobby. Uh, yes, back, but uh, the time has changed, and um, to uh, do so, um, a blouse, for example, oh, it is, uh, you get it so cheap in in shops. It must yep. be Primark because Primark is for me a uh, a no a no way no a no go. I, I don't like this. It's this horrible, isn't shop. it? <laughs> Yes, even the <laughs> miserable member. places. Yeah, but I know what you mean. Even if you go to um, the more upmarket shops, the cost compared with the time it takes is, uh, I mean, to me, most of the fiddly bits I don't like about sewing are things like making buttonholes. Um, 
I don't mind knocking up a wraparound skirt that's just tie on, but buttonholes, oh, and tailoring itself, um, darts, etc. Yeah. It's a whole vocabulary to do with um, making clothing, by the way. <laughs> but buttonholes are a nightmare. <laughs> Go on, Trump. You know, here, here in the surroundings, even in the city, so many uh, clothes shop, shops have closed because the, uh, because uh, uh, two, 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 two less customers. Yeah, there are fewer customers, yeah, and a lot of people buy. I don't like buying clothes online, but I know a lot of men do. Uh, my husband does. He likes to buy his jeans online now. He hates shopping. He just bought a jacket online. Uh, I tend to go to the shops, but I don't buy many clothes. Um, I only buy clothes when what I have is either so outdated it looks ridiculous on me or it's just falling off me. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I hate I hate shopping for clothes. I don't like this process at all. <laughs> yes, me either. Oh, this uh, to put on a clothes. I I don't like it. Really. It's just awful, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yes, because the um, uh, the uh, the uh, change room, changing rooms. Well, how how are they are called? The changing rooms. Yes. Yes, the ch ch changing rooms. They make me, they, the mirror there, they make me so fat. <laughs> I, I often kind of believe, is that this, is this really me? Oh my God, I am so changed. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, and that is funny. <laughs> I don't like them because they're cramped and smelly and you have to queue up and get your little ticket that says how many items you have and they look at you suspiciously when you leave. I hate the whole process of shopping. <laughs> you agree, Shiny? You don't like the mirrors. <laughs> they're not, what we say is they're not very flattering, okay? They're not very flattering. Uh, have you uh, read my article about the jeans? The guys, no, I, I'm, I'm sure it's shiny and man from no. <laughs> when did you write it, April? It might be that I've read it and forgotten oh. about it, but last summer. I last, think. Summer. last summer, oh my goodness! What in the writing section? Uh, yes. Ooh, April's jeans. Let's ha let's see if we can find it. Did somebody correct it? I don't think I corrected it. Uh, I'm. I think Marianne uh, corrected. Ah, okay. That's. T I must admit, sometimes when I see somebody's already corrected it, I will then go. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay. Um. I know. Do I found it? Here you go. There you go, guys. I think this is it. The jeans. I think we talked about them. Okay. Um, I think we talked about it in one of our sessions, but I didn't actually read the whole thing. Very good. Uh, yes, that's true. That's about the changing room. Yeah, it's awful, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so. Nowadays, it's very convenient and there's so much choice as well. Um, I mean... Pattern, style, short, long, um, heavy, lightweight. Much, but back then it was very much more restricted. I mean, there were no, um, it was all natural cloth. So wool, cotton, silk, if you were lucky, satin. Uh, there, was no, there were no um, manufactured fabrics. Um, so again, restriction on what you could wear and how heavy it would be. And also the style, well, yes, there was fashion then, but it had to be, I mean, if you look at what I'm wearing uh, in World Today, it was always, you know, everything had to be covered up. <laughs> there were no mini skirts, there were no jeans, my goodness, women wearing jeans, no way. I think the necklines and the sleeves changed in fashion and the rest pretty much and how many petticoats you wore underneath your dress changed in fashion and even men's fashion. Um, 
I think men were far more outrageous in some of the way, ways they dressed back then than they are today. Uh, they might think they're being outrageous, but look at Georgian times. My goodness. <laughs> okay, so I digress. I digress. Let's get back on track. Um, I'd like us to do a little bit of reading. Okay, it wasn't just clothing that was part of the cottage industries. Uh, can you think of anything else that might have been a cottage industry? Something you could do from home? Do you mean in this time or in... In this time, um, yes. Yeah. During this time. What might people I, I have manufactured and then given to the merchants to go and sell at market? What, what I know, uh, some uh, do something on, on post cards. They glue things on it. Yeah, postcards weren't that popular at this time in the 1700s. Uh, paper itself was very expensive. But paper making, yeah, that was a cottage industry. People would make paper out of different materials as well. Even cotton was used in pa making paper. In fact, we've only just got rid of our cotton um, banknotes in the UK. <laughs> it's an old industry. I think I have uh, misunderstood you. I ask you, do you mean in this time or? Oh, I meant in. The, I'm sorry. I meant in the time we're in 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 world. <laughs> I've got you now. Okay, no. In the past, in the time we're talking about, past. yes. <laughs> okay. I think lots of people made something out of wood, maybe bowls or tablets. Okay, what do we call somebody who makes things from wood? Uh, a grave, craft, craft, crafting. A, a, craft, a craftsperson is, yeah, but that would cover any craft. Uh, April's got it. A carpenter. Yeah. And we call it carpentry, the actual work. Uh, carver is more taking a block of wood and making a statue. Carpentry is making furniture, chairs, beds. And yes, carpentry was a skill and it was something that people did at home. I mean, you had the local carpenter. Okay, um, let me see. Who was the first person to speak to me today? I've got lots of What things. about honey? Is that, isn't that a cottage industry? It's, it's not. Never it's, more, a... it's more part of farming. Um, honey and keeping a hive, yes, uh, making honey. Yeah, making the honey was partly a cottage industry, but that was generally something the farmer would do, again, as a sort of side um, business. Okay, so the farm would keep livestock and grow crops, and part of the crop growing, they'd have a few hives to make honey. Um, I don't know if there was a big honey industry, <laughs> but anything with sugar in it was very popular, of course. Okay, I'm just trying to find out who was the first person to speak to me. I think it was... Shiny! Shiny, are you okay to read today? Can you take the microphone? Yes. Excellent. Good, good, good. Okay, let me give you, um, let me just decrease your sound a bit. You've got some background noise. Okay, here's the text. Okay. The domestic system was a popular system of cloth production in Europe. It was also used in various other industries including the manufacture of wrought iron ironware such as pins pots and pens for iron monitor monitor iron monitor it existed as early as the 50 
15th century, but was most prominent in the 17th and the and 18th centuries. It served as a way for uh, capitalists and workers to bypass the guy system, which was thought to be uh, cumbersome and inflexible. Very good. Well done. Okay, first one is ironmongers. Okay, so not ja, it's munga, ga, hard ga sound. And any munga, it's an old word, ironmonger, um, still exists today though. And it's basically people who trade in a particular commodity. So a munga, it's a ba basically a dealer or a trader. Okay, so fishmonger, we still have fishmongers. Yes, well done, Traum. Fishmongers, ironmongers, it's an old word, but it's still used in those contexts. Okay, do you want to try it, Shiny? Ironmongers. Ironmongers. Very good, well done. And then the other word is capitalists. Okay, just your pronunciation was fine, but it was a bit capitalists. So it's just capitalists. Capitalist. Yay! And the last one, again, slightly old-fashioned word, but you might know it from um, fantasy football. A guild. 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 Yeah. And back then, the guilds were very, very powerful. If you didn't belong to a guild, quite often you couldn't... You couldn't do that trade. You had to apprentice yourself for years to a master, a guild master, and then uh, you might be allowed to become a journeyman, and then you might be allowed to become a guild master yourself or a, a tradesperson. And this was basically the rise, this time was the rise of the merchant classes. The guilds couldn't keep up with demand, really. And um, there was more ability to move around. There was more freedom of movement than in the past. And the merchants and these, um, as I say, domestic production um, pretty much broke the union of the time, the guilds, the guildsmen. Okay. Any questions? What is Roth iron? So wrought is it Roth iron, iron, not Roth. Iron, wrought, wrought. wrought. It has been. Wrought iron ironware. Yes, wrought iron ironware is the big, heavy, um, if you think about the witch's cauldron, yeah, it's always black, heavy iron. That's wrought iron. It was a, a manufacturing process. You can still buy wrought iron gates. And it's been, um, wrought means to make, actually. <laughs> what hath man wrought? And it's used, um, it's, ra it's not cast, it's basically... Um, how, how would you describe it? Uh, it's worked, okay? It's, it's worked in a forge, okay? So you'd have a forge and you would forge the iron and then you would wrought it into different shapes into what you required, okay? What, a forge? A forge, yeah, a forge. Forge? Yeah. Forge is where you would um, heat up the iron. I mean, you might think of a forge when you're thinking about horses. They, they still exist. And um, you would take your horse to be shod by the uh, blacksmith. And the blacksmith would use a forge in order to shape the iron. Very, very hot oven. Okay. Okay, so April, you are the next person to speak to me. So if you'd like to read this paragraph. Okay. Workers would work from home, manufacturing individual articles from raw materials, then bring them to, the, to a central place of business, such as a marketplace or, or a larger town, to be assembled and sold. The raw materials were often provided by the merchant, who received 
the, Venice, the finished product, hence the synonymous term putting out system. Yay, this is the system that it's used by historians to describe this time and this type of working. So as I say, the rise of the merchant classes, the fall of the guilds, and um, the beginning of cottage industry. And to be honest, this if you look at the process that was used, uh, all they did when they started to industrialise was get rid of the transporting process. <laughs> Okay, just the one word, April. Finished. Not finished. Finished. Ish. Ish. Finished. That's better. Good, good, good. I know you can do that sound. <laughs> okay. I've got the impression that I have to do that like uh, Trump did always with his mouth. All oh, don't. No. <laughs> Ew. Don't. Don't mention that man. <laughs> It is, it is, it will be, it will be. Oh, just because you say something twice doesn't make it so. Okay, Traum, your turn. Okay. The advantages of this system were that workers involved could work at their own speed while at home. And children working in the system were better treat, treated than uh, they would have been in the factory system. Uh, although the homes were polluted by the toxins from the raw materials, as the women of a family usually worked at home. Someone, someone was often there to look after any children. Yes, I mean, if you imagine, uh, can you remember last week we looked at the dyes over here and, you know, basically they are toxic. You know what it means? By the way, beautifully read, Traum, no corrections. Well done. <laughs> so if you imagine um, you've got vats of dyes and you've got um, chemicals as well, lye, soap. Um, lye is L-Y-E, by the way, nothing to do with and very caustic materials as well. Um, so it was a not not the nicest thing, mate, and a bit smelly too. <laughs> yeah, uh, dye as well, but dyes were um, quite often natural dyes, but just because it's natural doesn't mean it's not toxic. But there's a difference. Lye is... Um, uh, a byproduct of ash, okay, um, and it's basically a chemical. But you make it, you can make it yourself at home if you want. Often used in soap, but often used in um, cleaning these. I don't know if you've ever felt wool straight off a sheep, uh, but it's full of grease and oil. Um, but the oil itself was extracted and then used in other. Um, products, but it was all a smelly process. Leather manufacturing as well. Um, they used dog poop. <laughs> that was a stinky job. That was absolutely sure. rank. <laughs> yeah, so I'm yeah, afraid a lot of houses would be very, very smelly back then. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, um, yes, um, how shall I say it? I think when they, um, altered or um, they've done anything on leather they also um, soaked it in in those dangerous in dangerous liquids even if it's made it is taken from from nature yeah i mean a lot of it people think it's that. natural they think oh it must be safe uh, but that's not so you know this it's all chemistry um it's just natural chemistry as opposed to um manufactured chemistry but uh, it's still dangerous it's still poisonous it's still toxic and it's still smelly i mean bleaching cloth white you would use back then urine so you got <laughs> poop in the leather pee in the <laughs> cotton <laughs> you <laughs> oh, I love the good old days as everybody insists on <laughs> talking about <laughs> okay so 
<laughs> and then you put them on the clothes. Yeah, they'd obviously be washed uh, a lot. But uh, And all this was carried out in your home. How delightful. Let's go into the house. Come on, follow me. So we'll go past the... Don't fall in the dye. <laughs> Okay, so you were asking about spinning and weaving, April. Yeah, but uh, from the last paragraph, I think they have to change the, uh, the last two, uh, sentence. Uh, as the woman of a family usually work at home, someone was always, not often, always. <laughs> well, actually, not, not always, no, because back then, children were allowed, um, I mean, quite often they worked, um, but they had a bit more freedom as well. If you remember Tom Jones' school day um, in uh, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, yeah, the, ki the kids ran wild, you know, they, they basically were feral almost. Do you, think, tr do you think Shiny's stuck? Shiny, do you want to, I'll send Shiny a teleport. <laughs> She's always has problems yes, moving yes. around. No, I know she gets stuck, bless her. So let me... I was wondering, yeah. I'll send her a teleport. Okay, so quite often um, you can see we've changed the layout of our little cottage here. Um, and a large part of the cottage would be sort of made over to um, become a tiny little factory in a way. You're welcome, Shiny. So, April, you were asking about the difference between spinning and weaving. Well, when you look at the tub outside with the wool, um, it's all in a big clump, really, isn't it? And the same with cotton. And so what the spinner would do would be to use a spinning machine. You can still buy them. They look very similar to this. Uh, some people buy them just as um, like little ornaments. Um, but some people still do this process. Hand spun wool is very expensive, very desirable buy. Who do you think might like hand spun wool? <laughs> we were talking about them on Wednesday. Hipsters. <laughs> and so the wool would go on the spindle of the spinning machine and then it would be fed through and you'd hand turn the wheel and it would twist the thread and twist and twist and twist and then it would wind onto this reel okay and when you had enough of it then the merchant would collect it and take it to the weaver's cottage so normally you'd have a spinner's cottage with a spinning machine and they'd have piles and piles of spun wool or cotton and then you'd have a weaver's cottage with does anybody know what this is called? The, the thing you, this is a spinning machine here. So you can sit at the spinning machine. Okay, so I'm suddenly, I'm a spinner. But what do we call the weaving machine, if you like? Any idea? It's got a special name. It's a loom. So you've got hand spun and hand woven. Okay, and again, even though this is centuries old technology, a lot of people still do it. It's a craft still. And they quite often it's a hobby craft now. But some people still make their living. I mean, in the UK, you can go to craft shops and you can go to craft fairs and you can find hand woven cloth and hand spun wool um, and you can buy it, but it will cost you. <laughs> Any questions? But uh, I think two years ago there was a hype uh, for the children looming. Yes, but, but that was with plastic. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we're flushed together. Same principle, weave and weft, okay? Joining things together to make something bigger than the individual parts. But on a, on a loom like this, again, you can see you've got the um, spun wool and then you've got the, um, the weave and the weft, okay? The, the threads that come down and then you used a shuttle and um, this board here, sorry, I'm showing people on a video, but, uh, and then you would, and again, still used in many parts of the world. But what was wrong with this system? Anything? Can you think of anything wrong? You can see, that, you know, they made cloth. Yep. Uh, there's bales of cloth ready for the merchant to come to take. Uh, and at each point, you added value to the raw materials. So the wool would cost X amount of money. You'd spin it, it would cost more money. It would be worth more. And then you would weave it, it would be worth more. So value was being added. Can you think of any problem here? I think the um, one thing is missing. We call it a uh, ship. You and it goes, it goes, it goes from left to right and the other way around. So the the pattern uh, will be visible. And it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's only a model. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Oh. It's called the shuttlecock. Okay, we call it the shuttlecock. Um, I think it's the shuttlecock, and it goes in between the different um, threads, and then it goes back again, and that's where you get the weave and the weft from, and you you move them backwards and forwards. These um, these threads that go down, they move forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, and you use the shuttlecock to weave. But yes, that's. <laughs> But I'm talking about the system. What would be the problem with this domestic system? Why did it have to change? Did it have to change? Should we still be doing this? Do you mean the, the action of, of making uh, a clothes or a carpet? Uh, in this way, in this kind of way we see? Yeah, I'm making it yeah. Well, should we have ever changed? Should we have industrialised? Should we still be doing this? Would you like to work at home, Traum? Weaving cloth? <laughs> oh, I don't know. But I would like to uh, to get the cup. Um, yes, um, uh, a rack. A nice hand woven rug. rug. Well, you can get Persian yes. rugs. Quite often they've been hand woven. Actually, they're, they're often knotted. They're not quite woven, Persian rugs. Um, and a lot of carpets, they use this knotted method rather than weaving. But um, let's not go too much into this. April's got it. It's very time consuming and a lot of transporting bits around and only small amounts. OK. Um, there were be there were benefits though. So shiny, if you would like to, has everybody read so far? Yep. So shiny, would you like to read that bit of text? Oh, yes. Uh, the advantages of this system were that workers involved could work at their own speed while at home, and children working in the system were important, were better treated than they would have been in the factory system. Although the homes were polluted by the toxins from the raw materials, as the woman of a family usually worked at home, someone was over there to look after any children. Very nicely read, and as Tramwell quite rightly said, badly cut and paste by me because she's already read it but it's fine it's fine april your turn <laughs> well spotted well spotted traum april if you would like to read this next bit of text this is the right one <laughs> it, it should be <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> the domestic system is often cited as one of the causes of the rise of the 
nuclear family in Europe, as the large amount of profits gained by common people made them oh, as the large amount of profits gained by common people made them less dependent on their extended family. These considerable sums of money also led to a much wealthier pe uh, peasantry with more furniture, higher quality food, and better clothing than they had had before. It was mostly centralized in Western Europe and did not take a stronghold in Eastern Europe. Yeah, this Have method, I, uh, very good. Food. Ah. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, that was fine, food. Um, but we say domestic, not domestic, domestic. Uh, okay, domestic. And peasantry. Peasantry. Yeah, peasantry. anybody who lived off the land and wasn't actually a landowner um, was de described back then as a peasant. Hello, Aladdin. Hey, still got your St. Patrick's Day outfit on. Excellent. <laughs> as you can see, I'm in the green too. I'm wearing the green too today. <laughs> and it fits the theme. Uh, what does what does it mean, Linda? A nuclear nu no, nuclear family. The nuclear family. Why? Yeah. The idea of a family as a unit. Yeah. Um, it's it's basically a social unit. Okay, nothing to do with nuclear energy. Okay. <laughs> It's a social unit. The idea of a family as a unit. Okay. Mother, father, children. Now, it might sound strange uh, that this was a new concept, but back then, quite often, children were sent away um, to live with other relatives or to be apprenticed off, etc. Um, the idea of keeping them at home was a bit rare. Yeah. Um, so it, it was basically parents and children. But anyway, it's a strange um, word in this context. It's so unnatural. <laughs> uh, even okay, it sounds strange. Hello, Aladdin. Can you hear us, Aladdin? Can we hear you? Oh, maybe you can't speak. <laughs> Can you speak? Hey, go on then. <laughs> Say hello. Save your fingers. Nope. Okay, just yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, now the problem was, I mean, there was profit and there was an improvement in, I mean, living off the land is not easy. Has anybody here tried to be self-sufficient? Oh, take, take your time. Don't worry. Don't worry. No worry, no hurry, no fuss. <laughs> Do you mean to produce anything from at home, Lynn? Yeah, but basically to produce everything yourself, not to be reliant on anything else. We call it self being self-sufficient or self-sufficiency. <laughs> hello. 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 Hello, it's working. Well done. <laughs> yes, it's working. Yeah. And have you ever tried to be... Is this with your new um, gizmo, Aladdin? Is this with your new item? With your boom bar? Uh, what is on your... Ad your your bar, your um, boom microphone holder, yeah? Yeah, yes, yes. But I, yeah. I have to switch from, from it, for, uh, from the setting, because it's... Um, a different microphone. I'm yeah. not always attached. Yes, I'm. I'm not always attached to my computer. So when I am trying to uh, 
to set it to, up to, to plug in in it's I have to switch from the setting itself so choose which one will be uh, my uh, output Okay. Voice. Okay. It, well, it sounds good. Yes. It sounds very good and clear. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So, um, April, I try to keep herbs at home. Herbs without the e at the end. Uh, so, I try. Do you mean keep them or grow them? I try to grow. I herbs. try to grow them. <laughs> okay. I oh, know how you are with your there. plants. I don't think they do very well, do they? <laughs> no. Oh, bless. Now, of course, back then, herbs were medicine, so that was another source of income, if you dared. You wouldn't want to be an elderly woman growing herbs and selling them because, um, yeah, the cries of witch, witch might come out. <laughs> OK, so I tried to grow herbs at home. No works. It, um, when you say no works, you mean unsuccessfully, yeah? Unsuccessfully, yeah. <laughs> okay. What do I say then? No work? <laughs> um, no work would mean just you don't work. It doesn't work or it didn't work, but I'd just say unsuccessfully, okay? So it's just as well you don't rely on that for your income then, April, or you'd be starving. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> um, and Traum, I make product. Now be careful saying product on its own like that. Um Product, often just singular like that, is the sort of gel that young men put in their hair. He's wearing a lot of product, would mean his hair's all spiky. And uh, so I make products or I make things, but not for selling. OK. Yeah, exactly. I make things, not for selling. In fact, selling. I'd say, but not to sell, but not to sell, but not, but not to, to sell. sell, but not to sell. OK. Okay. So it's like a hobby, yeah? It's a hobby. No, no, it's not like a hobby. Um, I, in in uh, for Christmas, I need an advert reef. Then uh, uh, at für alle Seelen, um, I I make a bouquet for our uh, uh, grief for the uh, parents' griefs. And so the whole year is anything to do. And yes, I I like to, to make it uh, with my own hands and I, I like it, yes. And why should, why, why should I, I buy it, buy them when I am able to do it myself? We have uh, here plenty of uh, forests where I can um, gather uh, things. I need it, it. All they are natural. It's it's a it's a great thing. Okay. Um. It's strange that you say no, not a hobby, because to me it is. It still sounds like a hobby, <laughs> as in you're not doing it to make money. Um, yes. But, and but you but enjoy do, doing it. A, <laughs> I, I I do not all the same. Or, or when I hear hobby, yeah, it's, it, it's a hobby, but I need because we we need it you know, exactly at that time. A hobby is for me, I do it whenever I have time, but in summer I don't need... Um, I so it's more of a task, okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it's a task. Okay. Good. Nice but, and and it, in some ways, I, I know you said, but not to sell, but in some ways that does make you slightly self-sufficient in, in that you do it yourself. You don't pay somebody else to do it for you. Um, you don't sell it, but it's for your own consumption. That's what self-sufficiency is. I mean, yes, you might have to barter or sell in order to buy things you can't make yourself. But real um, self-sufficient people, people who've gone right back, and they do exist, um, people who've gone right back to the Stone Age almost, uh, they don't want anything from anyone else. They want to be self-sufficient. And that includes killing their own food, uh, wearing clothes made out of animal skins, <laughs> you know, living in this century and um, often in remote places. Uh, if you'd like to watch a TV programme, just look up Ben Fogel and he goes to meet these people. They exist, okay? Not the lifestyle I would choose for myself. Okay, so <laughs> you don't cut your own hair, Aladdin. That's not very self sufficient. <laughs> No. 
<laughs> that means you have to work in order to pay for somebody to cut your hair. <laughs> okay, it's so... It's difficult to do it by, by yourself. It's it? difficult Isn't to it? do it yourself, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Some people do it, though. They buy a pair of um, electric electronic shears and just whack the whole lot off. Bzz. Um, a buzz haircut, yes, yeah. I have it also, but it's, it's for... My beard, maybe. Yeah. I have cut my own hair, Traum, out of necessity from time to time. No money, <laughs> cut my own fringe. But yes, it's, it, it's a dangerous thing to do. Best to do it when you've got long hair, not when you've got short hair. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, um, Traum, would you like to read the next bit of text? Oh, I like Yes, I like it. Good, good, good. Bear with me a second. I've just noticed this is not the text I changed. It's not um, updated on my system. But anyhow, hopefully that will make sense. Okay? Okay. Of course, the acquisition of profit largely depended on which part of the putting out system one was associated with. If one was a worker in the London tex textiles, textiles, textiles industry, for example, the cost of hiring, sewing, equipment and purchasing, purchasing threat often precluded the worker from eating on a regular basis. Likewise, the 14 hour days led to many uh, un un untimely, untimely deaths. Well done. Well done for working that out. Untimely, before their time. Yeah? People didn't live very long back then. Often poor diet and just basically too much work. Um, lots of people used to say to me, you, you know, you can't die from hard work but it's not true you can <laughs> okay just the one word to purchase purchasing nothing to do with to chase so you've got to chase but to purchase okay purchase purchasing 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 that's it so no chasing. Um, you chase a purchase, yeah. maybe, when you're going out bargain hunting. <laughs> but you want to purchase okay. something. And so really it depended at what point you were in this. I would, which jobs do you think would be the least paid? Which jobs in, in the system we've looked at, which part of the system would be the least or the worst pay, do you think? Everything that comes from home. Um, yeah, but in, in this, uh, you had the three parts, remember. You had the people who would wash and card the wool, the people who would dye the wool, the people who would spin the wool, and the people who would weave the wool. Which do you think would be the worst pay? The first one, the raw material. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you've got the people who would shear the wool. I mean, even today, sheep shearing is um, considered manual labour, smelly because you've got to work with horrible sheep, and they are smelly creatures and stupid. Um, all that... I know some Australian shearers, uh, the top paid ones, can make enough money to live on. But um, generally, the people shearing the sheep, raising the sheep, uh, and the people washing the wool and dyeing the wool, that would be probably the lowest pay. Then the people spinning the wool. So the further along the chain you were, the more skilled, um, the, more skilled the work was, then the more likely it would be that you had... Um, better pay and you could make a living and actually it did improve 
the living conditions of many people, especially if you've got the children involved. <laughs> Come on, children, keep weaving, keep weaving. They didn't have to go to school back then, so they worked. Yeah. That's why people had lots of children, to work them. <laughs> Was it not always the way that the, the merchants got the most money? It was in Venice, so, and the history tells us, and it is, it hasn't changed much nowadays. The no, this is the start of it. Place. Yeah, absolutely. The merchant class became powerful through this method. Okay, and then of course the drive was then to make more money, more money, more money. There's never enough money, never enough money. Doesn't matter how much you've got, it will never be enough. It will never satisfy you. Can't eat it, it's useless stuff. <laughs> okay, but yes, you're quite right. Uh, the merchants made the most and they did gamble though. You know, you have to understand they bought the raw materials and they um, they gambled on the weavers having woven the right kind of cloth, the, the transport, so that it wouldn't get damaged, um, that the mice wouldn't eat it, <laughs> that everybody wouldn't die of the Black Death. Um, if you look at the Black Death, where did the Black Death come from? They think it came from bolts of cloth um, and from the wool and the cotton being delivered um, into people's homes with the rats and the fleas and it's how Ve Venice actually got rich on the merchants but also on the banking system um, if you really want to make money um, yeah don't buy and sell finance people to buy and sell and then you're taking less risk uh, because you can always chase them for your pound of flesh as in the merchant of Venice later <laughs> So that's how Venice got so rich. Yeah. That's the way the world works. That's the way the world goes because we, we've allowed it to. Yeah, we were part of it. People who were working from home, yeah, they could have said, no, I'm not going to make cloth. If you want cloth, make it yourself. But they didn't. They went, OK, if you give me money, um, I'll make cloth for you. And that's how it all began. Any questions? Anything? We, what we'll do next week is uh, we're going to look at a very famous poem called The Song of the Shirt. OK, and um, unfortunately, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and the rise of the factory kind of destroyed the cottage industries and people became almost slaves to the machines, which is where we stand now today, <laughs> sitting at our computers. <laughs> You're welcome, Shiny. You're welcome. Thank you. I admire, I admire the weavers actually because uh, for me it is so difficult to make that kind of patterns with small flowers and all colors, and you have to use only strings and threads, and uh, oh. It is, it's pretty amazing, very isn't it? Me. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever yeah. seen it is lace? easier to, to draw, Elliot? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it, there's a big resurgence in home crafts and handmade items in the UK. There's even a TV series if you're interested. Um, now, what did they call it? Handcraft BBC series. I think it's called Handcraft or something. Um, Handmade. It's called Handmade. Um, handmade. Yeah. And um, it was basically getting some of the craftspeople who still exist in the UK and um, finding the best one. <laughs> master crafts. That's it. No, not handmade. Master crafts. And um, it's a lovely series. It really is. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to find it ever, but um, you can actually see some of the people from today you know modern people using computers but they've gone back to this spinning by hand weaving by hand making pottery glass blowing that's another one we haven't covered yet but yeah, making glass was a um, a craft you would generally do at home um, or in a barn attached you know you wouldn't go to a factory it wouldn't be factory made it would be handmade hand blown glass okay
So they did stonemasonry, that's another one, uh, weaving, stained glass, blacksmithing, um, thatching and green woodcraft. I watched them all, it was lovely, really lovely. Master crafts people. I mean, I'm useless. I, I'm totally useless at making anything. I can cook and I can draw and paint and uh, sing a little bit and write a little bit. But when you give me something like, you know, a loom, I'd be, I'm, I'm even knitting. I can't even knit. <laughs> you too. Oh, well, we can be pathetic together, April. <laughs> Even cooking, I can cook for myself, for my family. But uh, like uh, a lot of my friends, for example, uh, they cooked at home and they uh, they sell it actually uh, uh, a meal, uh, ready meal, ready to eat meals, for example. So they can make wow. uh, money <laughs> also from that. And I said, oh, if I have, I don't, if I uh, didn't have a job. I couldn't think of any other profession that I can do to make to to make a living for me. I'm so hopeless. Yeah, yeah this is the problem, isn't it? It's um, making a living. Yes, when you're, we are dependent on making a living. But I tell you what, if the nuclear holocaust does come, uh, we'll all head over to Traum's because she'd be able to knit socks for us. We'd be all right. She can cook. She can make things, and uh, she can knit. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I don't know what happened to me because my mum used to sew and, um, OK, she was not good at cooking, I have to say. I'm better at cooking than her. But I think that was just a generational thing. Uh, but she could sew and knit and crochet. And my grandmother used to make the most beautiful lace. I don't know, think, I don't know if you've ever seen lace being made. Now, that was an art where you could make a lot of money back then. If you look at my clothing... Um, if you had just a bit of lace on your clothing um, and the edging, you know, it would cost a fortune. Beautiful craft. Yeah, I have but... to device. So, sorry, Lynn. Mm -hmm. I have yes. to device to, to, to make lace, but I never done this. <laughs> because... <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at like the time, yeah? To... <laughs> it's so fiddly, it's so fiddly. Aladdin, yes? Uh, sorry, what did you say? Crochet? Crocheting. Crochet. Crocheting. Yeah, it's like yeah. knitting but with one word. needle. Yeah, to crochet. Yeah, I know. it. It's crochet. It's, it's the same here. Is, uh, ah, okay. Yeah, in, I'm not in, sure in, in whether it's French. The they are using the crochet, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And what what is the name of this machine? We are sitting. This is <laughs> we are. the loom. If, if you watch the... Um, the loom? I, I have been streaming, so... I know it, I know it. But I, know, I, I want to, to know uh, the name of English for it. Yeah, it is a loom, okay? And here, okay. Uh, here the one behind me, this is a spinning wheel, okay? To spin the wool and the cotton in mm -hmm. the thread, mm -hmm. okay? If you watch the, um, if you watch the replay uh, on YouTube, you'll, you'll find we, we did discuss the different names of okay. what we're looking at. And as Tram quite rightly put, pointed out, uh, there's no shuttlecock for the loom, <laughs> which is my fault completely. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell World's End they built this one. So uh, <laughs> I'll say, you forgot the shuttlecock. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to have to stop now. Um, we we'll, eh, Fingers crossed after last week. Uh, be, there will be TGIF today on Webinar Jam. And uh, if you need the link, just ask me on the <laughs> forum. Okay. <laughs> don't laugh. Don't laugh. It was such a catastrophe. I can't believe it was only a week ago. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So um, hopefully we'll see some of you on Webinar Jam. And Lynn. it'll just be a general yeah. chit chat. Yep. April, yes? One question, Lynn. Go on. you, we are, uh, you, are, you have been talking about hipster, hipster, hipster. <laughs> I uh, wonder what is the, that word? We have done it in uh, when about garbage, Lynn. 
uh, what is, I think it was also for dumpster. Hipster, no, not? dumpster diving. A dumpster. Dumps yeah, hipsters is, would yeah. not go dumpster diving. Okay. <laughs> okay. That is the, the word that I was looking for. Okay. Oh, I wish we'd Thank been. You. I wish we'd been streaming. I wish I'd been streaming when we did the dumpster diving. You with your legs sticking out of the dumpster yeah. was hilarious. <laughs> Okay, thanks ever so much for coming and uh, taking part. Uh, we'll carry on next week, as I say. Um, try and find the poem if you want to pre-read it. Okay, it's called... Um, oh, I've, I've lost my text. Hang on. Let me just open it up again. Uh, da, 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 cottage industry. Okay, it's called The Song of the Shirt uh, by Thomas Hood. So we'll read that next week. Uh, because it wasn't all plain sailing, all this self-sufficiency, okay? So the song of the shirt. Oh, what's happened to my uh, song of the shirt? No, the, yeah, Thomas Hood. Thomas Hood's The Song of the Shirt, okay? So we'll read that next week and um, we'll start moving on into the Industrial Revolution, okay? It all gets a bit wretched from next week on, I'm afraid. This is all a bit romanticised, really. But uh, <laughs> OK, I'll see you in a bit. Take care. If not, have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye. Hamster, April. Hamster? Why? why? Uh, um, my sister. My older, my older sister always asked me to, to uh, sew, to sew, to sew uh, dresses for to her, sew, for, yes. her uh, for her, yeah, to sew for, for her, and then uh, uh, when I, I was, uh, yeah, I have, I have bought a couple of uh, patron. Is that also patron? Lin? Uh, we call it patron in English. So the, in in paper up on paper. Oh, pattern, uh, patterns. A oh, pattern, yeah, pattern, patterns. Not pattern. I think patron. Pattern. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, it is pattern in, in Dutch. Yeah, not in English. <laughs> yes, paper patterns. Yeah, they're like made made of paper tissue pattern. paper. Yeah. Yeah, from Vogue. You see, do you know that Vogue? Vogue, Berta. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I made my my uh, myself my my dresses, but now uh, I'm too lazy for it. <laughs> oh shame! I agree that I mean the the problem now is it's not. I used to make uh, my own clothing. I was taught how to sew at school. I also have a sewing machine, an electronic sewing machine upstairs. Um, the most things I ever use my sewing machine for now really is. Um, if I have to mend something or making tablecloths because we've got a big table and uh, it's very difficult to buy the cloths. So I think the last thing I made was a tablecloth, which is uh, a shame really, but um, it does take time to make your own clothing and clothing is so much cheaper. Back then it was very expensive and yeah, quite do, elaborate uh, as well. Retouches. Sorry, April? Is that retouches, Lynn? Is that retouches? I do. I still do some retouch or retouches. Um, but, uh, plural. When what what do you mean by retouches? Uh, for example, I buy. Uh, I've bought jeans, and it's too long, so I uh, retouch that. Okay, uh, we wouldn't say retouch. Shorter. You can retouch a painting. Um, so when you want to make changes to clothing. Um, you can oh what would we call it um it's not retouching altering okay so you make alterate so i'm going to start streaming um would somebody like to just describe the picture to me well, a process of raw material material um who goes who undergoes some um uh, how shall I say it uh, undergoes uh, some methods to get close at the end yeah 
basically, <laughs> in this context, um, what we're looking at is the raw materials arriving uh, on the carts drawn by horses. And it was the merchants, the people who were going to sell the finished goods that tended to bring the raw materials. Now, as you can see, we've got sheep here, but um, if you were reliant only on the sheep you could keep, that restricted how much cloth you could weave. And so it was um, a good idea for the merchants to provide more raw materials than one farm could sustain. Okay. Um, and weaving was a skill. So then what would happen then? The raw materials would come and so let's look at wool and cotton. What would be the first process? Can you remember? We discussed it last week. Uh, wool and cotton, they, they are different, Nelly. Yep, they're they are, totally different, they but they're both some... raw materials, okay? okay? Uh-huh. And they goes to the spinner's cottage. Uh, they will be uh, before they go to the spinner's cottage. They have to be washed to be sheared. Uh, no, not shear. What was the mm. washed and carded? To right. card. Yeah, that's to right. Card. But washing is important, and uh, and of course the first thing that would happen to the cotton is it would have to be picked and the wool it would the sheep would have to be sheared you're quite right but then the washing and the carding and then that probably that um, prepared raw material would be brought to the spinners cottages then where would it go april a where or when where when where, where? after the spinners cottage mr was yeah, there are fewer customers, yeah, and a lot of people buy. I don't like buying clothes online, but I know a lot of men do. Uh, my husband does. He likes to buy his jeans online now. He hates shopping. He just bought a jacket online. Uh, I tend to go to the shops, but I don't buy many clothes. Um, I only buy clothes when what I have is either so outdated it looks ridiculous on me or it's just falling off me. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I hate I hate shopping for clothes. I don't like this process at all. <laughs> yes, me either. Oh, this uh, to put on a clothes. I I don't like it. Really. It's just awful, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yes, because the um uh, the uh, the uh, change room changing rooms. Well, how how are they are called? The changing rooms. Yes. Yes, the changing changing rooms. They make me the the mirror there. They make me so fat. <laughs> I, I often kind of believe is this is that really me? Oh my God! I am so changed. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, and that is funny. <laughs> I don't like them because they're cramped and smelly and you have to queue up and get your little ticket that says how many items you have and they look at you suspiciously when you leave. I hate the whole process of shopping. <laughs> you agree, Shiny? You don't like the mirrors. <laughs> they're not, what we say is they're not very flattering, okay? They're not very flattering. Uh, have you uh, read my article about the jeans? They, guys, no, I, I'm, I'm sure it's shiny and Trump, no. <laughs> when did you write it, April? It might be that I've read it and forgotten oh. about it, but... Last summer, I Last think. Summer. Last summer, oh my goodness. What, in the writing section? Uh, yes. Ooh, April's jeans. Let's, ha let's see if we can find it. Did somebody correct it? I don't think I corrected it. Uh, I'm. I think Marianne uh, corrected. Ah, okay. That's. I must admit, sometimes when I see somebody's already corrected it, I will then go. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay. Um. I know. This, I found it. Here you go. There you go, guys. I think this is it. Yes. After the spinner's cottage, uh, according to the picture, it goes to the weaver's cottage. 
But yeah. what is the difference between spin and spin, the spin and the weave? We will spin have a look at that in a minute. Okay. Yeah, we we we're gonna do well. We we can't do it, of course, but we'll look at the um, process involved in a moment. So it would go to the weaver's cottage, and the, so the spinners would spin the material. Uh, in this case, the cotton or the wool. They would spin it. They would create a thread and then that thread would be taken to the weavers probably again by the spinner or by the merchant maybe by the farmer maybe by maybe they would live in the same village um, it would depend on what skills there were available and then the weavers would weave the cloth and the we the merchant would come back to take away the finished cloth not the clothing note the cloth what do you think would happen to the cloth after the merchant had come and taken it away? Okay, I think the, the cloths will get to a tailor. Yeah, or to a seamstress or to maybe a shop that would sell the material. Um, a lot of things were made especially if it was fine cloth, a lot of things were made to measure back then. You wouldn't go down to C&A or Debenhams and buy off the peg back then. You'd make it yourself or you would have a seamstress or a tailor. Tailors tended to work making men's suits and seamstresses tended to work making ladies, children's clothing, that kind of thing. Some houses had their own seamstress and being able to sew was considered a necessary skill back then not many people know how to sew now i'm afraid to say what about you guys have you ever made your own clothing come on be honest april apart from not not virtual clothing okay <laughs> real clothing in the real world <laughs> i do i do i do i still do Lynn. oh uh, lovely not, uh, yeah uh in the past yeah, we made also, we learned, we learned that at school and I have, um, I had made a couple of uh, dresses and then after school. To make alterations, okay? So shortening uh, okay. the long trousers, um, letting out the waistline or if you're very lucky, um, letting in the waistline. <laughs> Usually it's to let out the waistline, <laughs> lengthening the sleeve, short, just little things. They're called alterations, okay, to alter, okay. And you can alter the pattern as well, and you can alter the clothing. Otherwise, if there's a, a problem with the clothing, for example, if a button has dropped off or if you've ripped a hole in something, then we call it to mend. That make, remember when I was talking about make, do and mend? during the um, last um, the last recession we had everybody was going on about make do and mend everybody's still buying stuff from Primark nowadays though <laughs> what about you Traum do you often make your own clothing or do you often make clothes for the children uh, I have to say I do more uh, of all uh, all uh, Alter, uh, alterings, alterations, alterations, yeah. <laughs> alterations. Yes, I did it, and it was a, a great hobby. Uh, yes, back, but uh, the time has changed, and um, to uh, do so, um, a blouse, for example, oh, it is, it's, uh, you get it so cheap in in shops. It must yep. be Primark because Primark is for me a. Uh, I know, I know way, no, I know go. I, I don't like this. It's this horrible, isn't shop. it? <laughs> yes, even the, the miserable smell, places. Uh, yeah, but I know what you mean. Even if you go to um, the more upmarket shops, the cost compared with the time it takes is. Uh, I mean, to me, most of the fiddly bits I don't like about sewing are things like making buttonholes. Um, I don't mind knocking up a wraparound skirt that's just tie on, but buttonholes, oh, and tailoring itself, um, darts, etc. Yeah. There's a whole vocabulary to do with um, making clothing, by the way. <laughs> but buttonholes and, and are I a nightmare. Say, <laughs> Go on, Trump. Here, here in the surroundings, even in the city, so many uh, clothes shop, shops 
have closed because the uh, because uh, uh, due to due to to less capital.